Here's the Knight Rider audio plays. When were they released? And how many editions were there actually? And which collector specialties exist out there? Let's first have a deeper look at the release cycle. Although not all release dates are known exactly, the following statements are pretty accurate guesses. Conclusions come by comparing cover inlay indications, comparison of production numbers, exactly known release dates and a bit of common sense. For sure in 1989, but as I believe at the beginning of the year the first six episodes were released. This is speculative, though I take into account that production is not only about recording but also about the writing of the storybooks up front. Also, composer Jan Friedrich Konrad first had to do the music beforehand, and both Europa and Konrad must have been rather busy since 1988. Don't forget, they released the James Bond plays in 1988, then continued with the Knight Rider series at presumably beginning of 1989, while from October onwards the same year we started to get also Airwolf, the A-Team, Back to the Future and A Nightmare on Elm Street releases. For this reason, beginning of 1989 totally makes sense for the first six episodes, especially as we definitely know the release date of the third batch. It was not long to see the second batch with episodes 7 to 10 being released. By comparing the cover inlays, we can safely assume this, as episodes 7 to 10 didn't get a mention on the previous 6 episode cover inlays. Furtherly, I have proof of one TV promo that was advertising the release of 4 new episodes. As we know subsequent issues 11 to 20 came out at the very same time, the only other option for the TV promo to coincide would be the 4th batch for episodes 21 to 24. For this reason, we may safely assume that it would have been spring 1989. It could as well have been summer 1989, but there's even further arguments against that theory. First, in October 89, the third batch was released, plus the first batch of Airwolf audio plays hit the market as well. Second, around the same time, the second batch of the Bond audio plays came out as well. That means that Europa delivered 22 action plays besides other productions they were doing at the same time. Considering the amount of work involved with so many productions, Spring 89 is a speculative but still safe bet. When were the CDs released? Well, that's not so easy to answer, as we're missing a release year on the cover prints. According to some sources we get told it's 1989, other sources claim it's 1990. Would you like to know which one is true? I wish I had the ultimate answer, but I can try giving one answer at least. As mentioned earlier, Europa did TV ads for Knight Rider at the time. I once read that there must have been two spots, though I personally am aware only about one. I've never seen it, but I managed to obtain a record audio track that I'm featuring on my channel as well. It would be easier if you had a full version from it, because the visual would also prove a lot more. Let's still listen into the audio for a second to get some clues. Sagen Sie, Michael, wissen Sie eigentlich, dass wir ganz groß auch für Spielkassetten herauskommen? Du spinnst, Kid. Das kann doch nicht wahr sein. Dann schau sie mal aus dem Fenster. Night Rider Hörspielkassetten. Jetzt vier neue Folgen. Exklusiv von Europa. Auch als CD. So we heard it's four new episodes being promoted. We know there is two batches consisting of four episodes. The already talked about second batch with the episodes 7 to 10 and issues 21 to 24 forming batch 4. From historic fact it's known that the German audio play market collapsed by the late 80s and early 90s. Plus we also know that only 6 episodes were released on CD. So what does it mean now? Speculation number 1. The reason we saw only 6 episodes on CD is a cause of the market decline. It was the last straw before the downfall and the cancellation of the series. Here's the pro argument supporting that theory. They advertised episodes 21 to 24 and threw in the CDs to see what happens. But as the series was cancelled soon after, we would not get any further CD releases. 
And here's the counter-argument. Various non-official sources state that the CDs were released in small numbers only, plus they were painfully badly mastered. It would have been a bad take to try saving a declining market with a bad release after all. Speculation number two. They tried to fill the wipe and market acceptance with the CD releases. Consequentially, the CDs were released early in the series in small numbers to see what would happen. Pro argument. When would you start a test balloon? Right, probably when the series was at its peak and not at the decline. Europa sold 3 million records in 1989 while releasing a total of 20 Knight Rider episodes, whereas in 1990 it was only a meager 6 episodes. Another argument. Europa did not do other CD releases at all at the time. This was the first and only series for many years to come. But why were there only the first six issues on CD? I believe exactly because of the market acceptance test. It didn't catch on, that's probably the reason. Of course, as many competing series were done at the same time, Europa might also not have had the time to focus on further CD releases. It was a very busy period for them after all. Counter argument. The differing sources on the internet tell different. Well, many things are written, but nobody seems to really have the ultimate proof. Or do we? I do have some proof which supports my speculation. It's these Europa ad flyers for Knight Rider. Foremost, the one to the right is the important one, as it promotes issues 1 to 20 on cassette, plus issues 1 to 6 on CD. Remember, there was only two production batches consisting of four episodes. From this perspective, it's rather much more likely that the CD release would coincide with the release of the second batch with issues 7 to 10. There's not much to say about the third batch, except that it was record breaking. They released 10 episodes at the same time in October 1989. This was an absolute record, which was only topped by the fact that at the same time Europa also released yet another 6 first time episodes of Airwolf. After having had so many releases within a short time frame, the fourth batch took a while. Exactly one year later, in October 1990, we saw issues 21 to 24. Although Europa was awarded X times gold for 3 million records sold in 1990, the release frequency was in decline already. Heike Dina Kurting herself stated in many interviews about the market collapse during that period. This is fully congruent with the fact that we were not to see any further releases after 1990. That brings us to the final batch with the last two episodes. I think these were released in very small numbers and maybe a bit rushed as well, probably to just capitalize from it while they still could. My observation is that the last two episodes are rare to find in the used market today and if you find them, Pricing is exorbitantly high in comparison to the other episodes. Let's rewind the time quickly to 1989 for the club editions. These were for certain published in 89 for the first two cassettes. The production number indicates though that there must be a time gap between the first cassette and the subsequent issues. If I had to bet, I'd say it was summer 1989 as a release time for the first cassette. As these were special editions for Bertelsmann Book Club, I'd say that they would have a special run only produced when the series had already become a success, so summer 89 is my bet. For editions 2 and 3, these were likely produced at the same time if we go by the production number. Here again I can only guess about the release date. I'm in for saying that cassette number 2 was released in October 1989 and the third cassette came by end of year 1989 or very very early 1990. For the last statement we must consider that this cassette has two production numbers as well, one by the elder format and one by the newer format which Europa started to use from 1990 onwards. It's thus highly likely that this cassette falls into the time period 89. 90. 
And finally we have the fourth double episode on display. Also this one has two production numbers, though again with a bigger gap between the ones from the previous issues. Here I adopt that it was released somewhere in spring 1990. How is the production numbers helpful anyway for time guessing? That's somewhat simple. Europa had sequential release numbers ever since, though they were not always consistent. Sometimes an entire series had sequential numbering dedicated solely to that series. Sometimes it was sequential number spread over multiple series. And sometimes it would even be mixed and matched to other convenience just made sense. Because this is known facts, one can take other audio plays by Europa and compare production numbers. By counting the number of total releases across all audio play series and considering the typical production duration, it's possible to guesstimate the release time. Luckily, most of the time the production year is printed on the cover, which helps as well. But most of the time is not equal to always. And here's another bonus fact about the club editions. I really ran through everything I could find. Every single audio play portal only ever mentions episodes 1 to 26 and sometimes club editions 1 and 2 which are double features containing the regular episodes 1 to 4. For club editions 3 and 4 on the other side there is simply no mention anywhere, as if they never existed. Up until November 2021 I didn't know about them either before spotting them on eBay. What can I say? It's not rumors, it's not fakes. I'm holding them here in my hand right now. These double features really exist, but they must have been produced in such small numbers that nobody seems to own or remember them with details vanished into obscurity over time. Definitely a collector's item. This cassette with a clear body and a metallic grey insert represents the first edition. This very unusual design was used exclusively by Europa for the Knight Rider series. A few rare cases are documented where this design was also used in other Europa audio plays, mostly for special editions. This design is a variation of the previous one. It differs only in the grip pattern in the area of the tape guide. Although I can actually only use offerings on eBay as a comparison basis here, it seems that this housing variation only appears in episodes 11 to 20 and even then only for individual episodes. I count this variant among the first edition. Furthermore, I assume that this variant was used in parallel to the first one. For the subsequent editions, there was this variant with a large window, grey housing and blue lettering. I know of two versions here, with a glued and a screwed casing. The black-grey design was available in two versions. What both have in common is that the printing on these issues is always of poor quality, either has inclusions or is smudged. This variant was consistently used for follow-up issues on episodes 1 to 24, whereas this is the first editions for episodes 25 and 26 as well. Then there is this design with an attached label. This was used in the first edition and largely in subsequent releases of episodes 21 to 24. This black casing is a curiosity and until recently I didn't even know that the cassettes even existed in such a design. There must have been very few issues in this design overall, presumably only for episodes that were particularly popular. During my research I was only able to secure episodes 3, 7 and 10 in this design. This last cassette is also a special case. One could say, man, it's just yellowed plastic, but no, it's not. On one hand, the color is too even for that, and on the other hand, the other cassettes would also have had yellowed over the time. But no, the cassette is reminiscent of the yellow design, as it was then very common with audio plays by Europa. For comparison, I have included the images from rockybeach.com for the three investigators series on the left hand side. It's a bit of a problem with capturing the colors correctly and there's always some variance in the shade of yellow. However, we definitely have a cassette with a yellowish tint here and not an ultraviolet yellowed cassette.
As far as the inlays are concerned, a distinction must also be made between several editions. For episodes 1 to 6, the front cover of the inlay did not have the imprint promoting the original TV voice actors. Instead, this was attached to the outside of the case as a sticker. In later reprints for episodes 1 to 6, the note about the original voice actors was then printed directly onto the front cover. This design was also used for all issues from episode 7 onwards for both the first and subsequent editions. Episode 6 is an absolute exception, as there was no less than four different versions, in addition to the already known variants of the first and subsequent editions. There were two interim editions that differ in the spelling of the title. Interestingly enough, here too, both are available in two variations, ones with and ones without the imprint promoting the original voice actors. Episode 16 is worth mentioning as the title and the plot just don't add up. The episode is Inside Out, which is advertised here, in which Michael wants to stop Colonel Kincaid. However, we actually got the episode Return to Cadiz from the second season of the series. I couldn't find out what the background to this is. Maybe they originally wanted to produce Inside Out, but then spontaneously changed their minds. Or the creators at Europa simply like the title better. We will probably never get to know. In episodes 23 and 24, there was probably a mix-up, because the synopsis on the two episodes in the first edition was switched over. Only the second edition then corrected this. As far as the inside of the inlay goes, these always came with a uniform design. Michael was printed on the left hand side and the list of speakers was separated between the main roles and the supporting act with the note of also starring. From episode 25 onwards however, there was a break in style and suddenly not only Michael disappeared but also the Knight Rider headline. Also the note about also starring was omitted. Episode 26 finally has a misprint in the episode title too. Ok, this is somewhat hard to properly translate, as it's about a misprint in German that changes the meaning of the title. It's about the episode White Line Warriors. In Germany, the episode is called Eine Kleinstadt lebt gefährlich, which translates to A Town Lives Dangerously. However, the printing on the front reads Eine Kleine Stadt, so the meaning changes to A Small City Lives Dangerously. And finally, the special case about the club editions, which were published as double features. For a long time, I had the opinion that there were only two of them with the first four episodes, until I found out by late 2021 that there have been two more with the episodes 5 to 8. As a specialty, the first three club editions each mention the episode numbers next to the title, whereas the fourth club edition does not. Apparently, someone was not paying close attention here. For episode 1, Night of the Phoenix, it's easy, that's Kit heading towards you in the closing credits. And while they generally use the same shots for both the cassette and CD covers, the first episode, Night of the Phoenix, is different in that they used a shot from the TV series intro instead. In episode 2, Race for Life, we have a mirrored still frame from the Tapas connection, where Michael tries to rescue Lauren from the airplane. They used a typical promo image for episode 3, Kit vs. Car. For Blind Spot, episode 4, they used promo shots of season 4. I couldn't locate the original, but many similar photos from the same image series. I couldn't find as well the original image for episode 5's Night and Nerd episode, but there are many similar ones which were taken at the same occasion in 1982. For Kidnap it's easy again, that's a still shot from the opening credits. Yet another promo shot for the dashboard using Bias front cover. I found references for this one as well on old trading cards. I have no idea why they added a background tint to this image for nobody does it better. Maybe to obscure the fact that this is from the same image series than episode 4's cover. And while we're at it, the same cover was also used for the Club Edition 4. However, this time over without tinting the background color. Yes, it's easy again for Scent of Roses, although side flipped, but this still shot is definitely from the season 1 desert closing. This was also featured on trading cards. 
Yet another disguise on Junkyard Dog. However, this image again belongs to the same image series than the covers used in episodes 4 and 8. This one is a classic season 1 promo image from 1982. The episode is Chariot of Gold. Yet another Topaz connection still framed for episode 12, Night by a Nose. The Topaz connection it is, but the episode is no big thing. I couldn't find the image used for Night in Disgrace, except for a very bad trading card image. This image surely is from season 1, if not from the pilot presentation itself. Nightlines prominently features a promo shot from season 4. Fun story. We have a season 4 image featuring Bonnie on a second season episode return to Cadiz. Yet it's not the very same image, but from the same image series and very very close. For Brothers Keeper we have a merge image from two different season 4 promo images. Nearly untouched is the promo shot for Diamonds Aren't the Girl's Best Friend. The same image was also used for the inlay depiction of Michael Knight. For Dead of Night the stock image was nearly unchanged except for the blue sky. I had always wondered what Michael is doing here until I finally saw the entire picture. Well, there surely would have been better images for the final verdict. Boring! It's a Tapas connection again. The episode is Night in Retreat. And yet another image fusion for a knight in shining armor. The background is from the opening credits. Michael is wearing a polo shirt and this is definitely from a season 4 image series, though I couldn't find the original image. It's Halloween night and the images are a fusion from episodes 16 and 17. In Knights of the Fast Lane we see the same promo shot from episode 19, plus they took episode 20's Michael and changed the angle a bit. Also, somebody recolored his grey jacket to black. Kit the Cat, and the image is a fusion from the third episode promo image and a turbo boost scene that I could not identify. Gosh, they really were into that episode 20 promo shot, were they? Back to the grey jacket again, but in mirror image on top of the episode 6 opening credits scene. Why not use something that was better suited for White Line Warriors? And this is it again with my second look at the Knight Rider audio plays. Admittedly, I did some educated guessing and speculation about the release cycles, trying to stick things all together with the small pieces and indications to deduct the most reasonable chain of events. But still, the only ones who really know, Europa, didn't respond to my inquiries to shed some more light on the details. This is a total pity, as I would have loved to come up with hard facts and not speculations. Still, I hope you liked this second look at the Knight Rider audio plays, and if you did, then please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Which video do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.